This week in our tomato series, we are moving forward to discuss more tomato terms that can help you choose the perfect tomato variety to grow in the Southwest. You may not know that you're hanging out with a science nerd, but my degree is in molecular and cellular biology, and I am so excited about sharing some scientific terms that will help clarify how to choose and understand tomato cultivars and varieties. You've probably heard the terms cultivar and variety often used interchangeably, but they actually have different meanings. A tomato cultivar refers to a specific cultivated variety of tomato that has been selectively bred for distinctive characteristics through propagation practices such as cutting or hybridizing selected plants. This is a form of artificial selection. So what is artificial selection? Artificial selection is the intentional breeding of plants or animals by humans to develop specific traits or characteristics. Unlike natural selection, where environmental pressures drive the survival and the reproduction of organisms, artificial selection is driven by human preferences or by agricultural needs. Let me give you a really simple example of artificial selection and intentional breeding. The mule has been deliberately bred since ancient times. It is a cross between between a male donkey and a female horse or a mare. It can also be done by crossing a female donkey with a male horse and in that case it wouldn't be called a mule, it would be called a hinny. Mules were intentionally bred because they had high endurance, they had amazing strength, and they were very sure-footed, which made them very useful for hauling large, heavy loads long distances through rough terrain. Notice that we use the word hybrid here, and we will talk about that in just a minute. The keys to artificial selection are human-driven by farmers, breeders, and scientists who choose which plants or animals to reproduce. There are targeted traits. Speaking of tomatoes and not mules, selection for focuses on traits like flavor, size, color, yield, disease resistance, or growth patterns. Artificial selection occurs in controlled environments like agricultural or laboratory settings rather than in the wild. A tomato variety often occurs through natural selection without human intervention and likely in a specific geographical location. Varieties are stable and consistent when you save those seeds and start new plants from those seeds. Natural selection is the process by which organisms with traits better suited to their environment are more likely to survive, reproduce, and pass favorable traits to their offspring. Over generations, this leads to the adaptation of species to their specific environments. The keys to natural selection are variation, different traits amongst individuals in a particular population such as size, color, or disease resistance. Heritability, those traits can be passed from parents to offspring. Differential survival and reproduction, some individuals are better suited to their environment, allowing them to survive and reproduce more successfully. Adaptation, over time, beneficial traits become more common in a population. This is because certain traits make an individual more likely to survive and reproduce. You can see the results of natural selection in arid adapted varieties of fruits and vegetables that we grow here in our gardens. A plant that survives environmental conditions such as low humidity, low rainfall, high heat, or other environmental factors that goes on to produce a fruit and seeds will have offspring that are better suited to that environment as well. To add a little more detail or confusion, a cultivar can be an heirloom but not all heirlooms are cultivars. Not all cultivars are GMOs, but GMOs can be cultivars. This is why understanding the difference between artificial and natural selection will help some of these terms and concepts be a little less confusing once you get your head wrapped around it. A hybrid can be created by a breeder crossing two different parent plants together to get desired characteristics. This would be an example of artificial selection and the making of a cultivar, either in a laboratory or in an agricultural setting. A hybrid can also occur in nature through natural selection by cross-pollination and can lead to a new species. Hybrids will have specific characteristics like disease resistant or pest resistance or uh, adaptability to growing conditions like a greenhouse or indoors or in a container, maybe it's heavy yielding, things like that. When you look at a seed packet, 
Sometimes it will be noted on the front of the seed packet that it's a hybrid. It will have the name of the tomato and then underneath it will have hybrid. Sometimes it will have the name of the tomato and then you will see F1 after that. F1 refers to the offspring of two different tomatoes that have been crossed together. If you grow an F1 or a hybrid tomato plant and then you try to save seeds from it, the tomato plant that results from those saved seeds will not have the characteristics that you're expecting. They could be better, they could be worse, or just different. And so if you're wanting a specific kind of tomato, don't try saving the seeds from hybrids because you won't get what you're expecting to get. Some people get a little scared of growing hybrids and there really is no need to. Specifically when it comes to tomatoes, it is just the cross between tomato one plus tomato two, which gives us a hybrid offspring with characteristics that we want or need. There is no addition of any other genetic information or material as there is with GMOs, which we'll talk about in just a minute. And if you think about it from our mule example where we cross a donkey and a horse to get a mule that does better under certain circumstances and environments, that is exactly what a tomato hybrid or another vegetable hybrid does for you as well. An heirloom tomato is an open pollinated variety that has been grown and shared often in a specific location for many years. Open pollinated simply means a flower is fertilized naturally by wind and insects. Heirlooms were around long before commercial hybrids were developed beginning in the 1950s. Heirloom varieties are known for their wonderful flavor, but they often lack resistance to diseases and pests and can struggle under certain conditions. If you want to save seeds from an heirloom tomato, the offspring that you get will be exactly like the parents, and so you can save those seeds without worry, unlike with the hybrids, which can give you who knows what. I have saved GMOs or genetically modified organisms until last because they are a hotly debated topic. A GMO is a plant that has had its genetic material altered using modern biotechnology, often by introducing genes from other species. A GMO plant that has been developed for a specific purpose, such as disease resistance or herbicide tolerance, can be considered a cultivar if it is recognized, named, and propagated consistently. However, many cultivars are not GMOs, they are the result of traditional breeding methods without genetic engineering. GMO seeds have been developed with certain characteristics in mind, but have not been available to the home gardener until recently. In 2024, the purple tomato became the first genetically modified or GMO seed released to home gardeners to plant in their gardens. Historically, GMO seeds have been exclusively available to large-scale commercial growers who are under contract agreements with the seed company who developed it. These seed companies do not supply their product to home gardeners or to garden supply stores. Before that, the Flavor Saver was the very first genetically modified fruit that was available to consumers starting in 1994. It was engineered to delay ripening by inhibiting an enzyme that causes the fruit to soften, allowing it to stay firm longer during transportation. In this case, the fruit was sold to consumers to eat not the seed for planting. Because the Flavor Saver faced high production costs and high consumer skepticism, it was discontinued in the late 1990s. Gardens are a very personal thing. They are an extension of us, our desires, our needs, our values, our interests. So whether you plant an heirloom or a hybrid tomato, that is your choice. I am just presenting the information for you so that you can better understand the terminology. If you're worried about getting a GMO seed into your garden, remember that as of right now, January of 2025, the only GMO seed available to home gardeners is the purple tomato. Next week, we're going to be talking about the growth habits of tomato plants, such as indeterminate and determinate, and the pros and the cons of both of those things. We're also going to be talking about all of the information that is on a tomato label and seed packet and how to understand all of those things. We're going to be utilizing some of the terms and vocabulary that we've talked about this week and last week, so stay tuned for that. I'm Kara from So Arizona. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy gardening.